If you compare yourself to other businesses, if you compare your business to other businesses, compare yourself to other people, you're gonna think that you're not good enough. We just lost a client. So they, this client paid us $90,000 a month. So a million dollar a year client, right? They said, hey, we're leaving. We don't have contracts, but it takes us a month to offboard you because we have so many things. And they were like, no, we need it done now. Welcome back to the Eight Figure Agency Show, where a successful entrepreneur and a soon-to-be successful entrepreneur help you with an eight-figure agency by documenting their successes and failures. Guys, welcome back to episode six. Gary, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, doing well. Just coming off the 4th of July weekend. Everybody's tired, as we talked about, but I'm excited about today. I am fired up. I'm wearing this blue v-neck. Got a nice background today again, luckily. And uh, I've got a lot of fire things that I want to talk about today that I think are going to be super, super valuable to everybody. Before we begin, I do want to say, guys, if you guys are enjoying the show, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, please, 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 it would mean the absolute world to us if you just took five seconds and left the review, an honest review. It doesn't even have to be five stars. We genuinely want your honest feedback on what you think of the show. So if you could do that, that would be great. If you're listening on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment on what you thought of the episode. Like I said, it truly means a lot to us, and it lets us get better and create better content for you that will provide you value. Now go do it. Now don't just sit there. <laughs> you're just sitting there. You're not doing it. Like 99.9%, .9 everybody except for my mom is, is, is not listening right now. So just go do it. Take a second and go do that. It'll take you like three seconds. Just click the five-star button. Just go do it. All right. Did you do it? Is, it? is it done? <laughs> I think I, all right. All right. With that said, guys, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and you dedicating even the five, 10 minutes you spend listening to the show, even if it's not the full thing. Guys, this is going to be a fire, fire episode. For some context, last week we spoke all about company culture and it was an incredible conversation because Gary literally called me out and made me realize that I have a company culture, but I'm not clear on my company's why. And if I'm not clear, my team isn't going to be clear. And that in the long run was going to be detrimental. So like I said in the last video, to keep myself accountable, I did go ahead and create my company why. Yeah, I did go ahead it? and do that. So uh, the company why is going to be, I'm pulling it up right now so I get this right exactly. <laughs> I still got to memorize this. Okay. So I, made, I made so many renditions of this, but helping everyone we work with reach their full potential. Mm. That's it. I love it. That's it. And actually, yeah, I got it. You'll keep whittling that down over the years. Like eventually, you'll just be like, reaching your full potential or something like that. But I really like that because it obviously encompasses your team, right? Because you want your team to reach their full comp potential. And this will keep you aligned too, Derek, because when you have to make really hard decisions, like of letting someone go because they're slowing the rest of the team down, you're going to say, am I doing what's helping everybody reach their full potential? Mm -hmm. One, I'm letting that person go because they can't reach their full potential here because they don't have the skill set necessary. And two, I have to let them go because they're holding the rest of the team back and they're not reaching their full potential. Hmm. Obviously, reaching your client's full potential and then your company will always reach its full potential if those two first two things happen. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. See, when I was when I was thinking about it, like I was really thinking like all the way back to when I was like 13, 14 and I first started making YouTube videos and I first started that original clothing brand and even when I was going door to door shoveling houses, like I was thinking, why would I, like why was I doing all that? Like why was I doing, coming home from school, making YouTube videos and I realized it was to maximize my potential and I realized I could translate that to everybody that I work with and that really just resonated with me and now that's my company why. So I'll be building out a presentation to present. I also went ahead and like we discussed, officially set up weekly team meetings, Mondays, 10 a.m. Everybody's on there. It's a 15 to 20 minute chat. We're going to go over our company values, go over the action items for the week, and that's it. Everyone's going to have like a couple minutes to present. We're going to get realigned and we're going to move forward like that. I've got officially all employee meetings scheduled, which is awesome. Um, with that said, I do want to start off by touching on something that I think is going to provide a lot of value to people who are really starting off. And I would love your insight on this. For some context, Gary, it was uh, Friday. Um, this past Friday, I was sitting on my couch. I had an, an Instagram advertisement pop up on my feed. And it was an Instagram advertisement for a very similar service that my company provides. So being the type of person I am, right, curious little person, I went on the Instagram ad and I kind of stalked their page. And I wanted to see what my competition is doing. Bad idea. It was a very bad idea because when I saw what my competition was doing, I, you know, on the couch on a Friday afternoon and between my eating my lunch, got really stressed out. Like I was going pretty crazy. I wanted to see your thoughts on 
analyze your competition and specifically translating that into pricing, which I'll get into in a minute. What are your thoughts as a new entrepreneur when it comes to competition? So this is really hard because it, everything in your body, right? Everything as an entrepreneur, you're going to want to change everything instantly. And that's not always the best decision, right? And so that's probably where the stress came from. It was like, oh, we're not doing this and I need to get this. And so you start building out all this stuff. And really, honestly, all you're going to end up doing is passing on all your scramble brain stress onto your team. And then it's going to be a huge issue, right? So the, there's a couple different ways that you can go about this. First thing you want to do is you want to create a, it's called a SWOT analysis. Have you ever heard of that before? Yes, I have you probably. Okay, cool. So yeah. SWOT analysis is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and the T stands for something else really good. So, um, <laughs> the, uh, um, and so, so anyways, but what it does is it helps you break things into sectors and really figure out. Now, the research that you're doing is actually really important. It's important that you understand that. But you need to like run it through filters. So you need to run it through your like team as a filter. You need to run it through people like me as a filter. Because I may just tell you the opposite. Like a lot of times, I think what if you pay attention to the conversations that we have, a lot of times it's opposite is what's going to get you ahead. So it's like, man, I got to have the best client, you know, stuff. But it's like, no, you need to have the best team. Man, I need mm-hmm. to have the best marketing. No, you have to have the best relationships. Man, mm-hmm. I need to have that, right? Like, so it's like opposite. Yeah of what we intuitively think because when we view everything through a lens and that lens, let's pick an industry we don't know anything about, uh, the auto industry, right? So we view everything like, man, that company must be killing it. And in reality, they're not. And this company, I uh, kind of like this company, you know, and it's never what it seems because we don't understand all the back workings. And so we just view everything through this very narrow lack of knowledge lens. So I think building out a SWOT analysis will really push your thinking because I think you are thinking, but it's, but it's very narrow. So you need to broaden that and the SWOT analysis. So I would at first base it on, uh, on just your company as a whole, and then go through like your marketing, do a SWOT analysis on your marketing and, and just start working through that. Um, I've also talked to a lot of other companies about your services like the services you provide versus what they provide. There's different niches, right? There's, I had a podcast yesterday with somebody who was all, um, they do the whole service for you. So they fly out to you, they film it. They, that's for a particular kind of person, right? They even come up with the questions and the content and all that kind of stuff and, and then edit it. So it's like end to end. Yours is for a different kind of person, right? And you have a totally different focus. So I think, um, really tying that together is, is a, is a big deal. Like that's what analysis that is. Yeah. And you know, I really, I'm glad that we went there because really the reason I brought this up is this is not the first time something like this has happened to me. And I bet you, Gary, if I had to put my money on it, that it probably happened to you many times. And Every the day. first, th- yeah. And the first thing you said was like, in my initial reaction, I got to do this, 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 I'm not doing this. They're doing that. That was my, I was honestly for like a minute there, my heart was like, like I was flipping out because I was looking at this beautiful landing page. And you know what got me? And this is kind of where I wanted to go. Uh, and, and, you know, before I do that, I do want to say, right, to, to Gary's point, especially early on, right? And even I think like you're saying, Gary, even in your position now, it still happens. This type of thing will happen. You will try to so, compare yourself. Yeah, let me go. This just popped into my head. So we just lost a client. So they, this client paid us $90,000 a month. So I want you just to sink that in. So a million dollar a year client, right? Yeah. They left. They said, hey, we're leaving. We're like, hey, we got, we don't have contracts, but it takes us a month to offboard you because we have so many things. And they were like, no, we need it done now. And we were just like, look, we'll try to, we'll do our best to make it work for you. And we lost that client really, really fastly and abruptly. And so we had to have a really honest conversation as a team. Like, why did this happen? Was this something that happened because we're blind in areas and we're not seeing things or is this just like a rogue situation where someone's coming out of the blue and making a decision and they're just panicking themselves. Right. Cause sometimes that happens or is it something in between? And we had to have some honest conversations about that. And there were hard conversations to have, but, but they were needed and it, it helped us. It helped us calibrate and just get better. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly right. And that goes to the, we've had so many episodes on teams and that's why I have never felt more confident in a company because I have a team now. Yeah. Like the, the, the way you described it, you were able to turn to your team. You're able to consult the people you trust. And as a team, you're able to work out a solution where you're able to come up with. And honestly, even your team members, like 
I did the same thing. I went to my team first. In fact, I went to the BDR and I was like, hey, look, look at this. What are your thoughts? And he basically helped me get to that exact realization, right, that I will bring up in just a moment about, you know, commodity and about pricing, which is really why I was starting to kind of go crazy about this on the couch that day. Uh, but really, if you're just starting out, this will happen. And comparison, I mean, it's cliche, but comparison is the thief of joy is something that I've been finding to be a really true thing, as cliche as it might sound. If you compare yourself to other businesses, if you compare your business to other businesses, if you compare yourself to other people, you're going to think that you're not good enough. And that's really, really dangerous. And I'm speaking from firsthand experience yeah. all the time, every well, day. Well, what's also dangerous, like that's dangerous, but what's also dangerous, and this is what drives the entrepreneur, is like, well, what if we aren't paying attention and there's this technology shift? Mm -hmm. Like, Let me give you an example. Let's say right now there's this new piece of technology comes out and it's like, we can create you a short that will produce... 10,000 views every single time with a 30% interaction rate. And we can yep. just take it right from your podcast as a machine can do it. And it's $99 a month and you ignore that. Well, that's a pro like that was negligence on your part, right? Yep. Cause you were like, well, yep. I don't want to be stressed out. Well, you ignore something that's going <laughs> to smash your business. Right. Yeah. So, so, so there's, so that's where I think we need to nail that down. Right. Like there's, there's a pro you have to have a process that you work these things through and you have to have people that you work these things through. So I still have people that I go to and go, what do you think about this? Where do you think this is going to go? Hey, dude, should I worry about this? Should I not worry about this? And that's going to help you pick which things to actually worry about and which things not to worry about. I think the comparison part is really good, especially for younger entrepreneurs. Like, who cares? Right? Like, who cares if someone has 10,000 more followers than you? Who cares if someone's doing a million dollars more than you or less? Like, none of that really actually matters because it doesn't move the needle. But the comparison on competition from people stealing market share or technology snatching up uh, opportunities from you, that is something that you do have to compare and contrast on. Mm, that's exactly right. Hey, well, I just had an idea for another episode. I'm just going to jot this down really quick. Separate. Sorry, one second. <laughs> Okay. All right. We should leave that in there. I love we that. We should leave that in there, Kyle. You yeah. should. Hey, guys, new episode. What was ideas. that idea, by the way? I want to know what it is. Um, I don't know if we should leave this in for them. So, Kyle, yeah, you probably cut this out. Leave I don't know. No, no, I no, don't, don't know. Cut it out. I think. Kyle, I... Don't. Tell <laughs> don't cut it out. <laughs> I think. I think we should uh, potentially do an episode on navigating an agency through a recession. It's been on my oh, mind yeah, a lot. So I've, I've actually done that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. Okay. I think. I that's think good. we should do that. So that's our but... next episode. But if you gotta, you gotta watch it. So. You do, you do. You gotta, you gotta follow. Subscribe on the YouTube. Oh, yeah, where you and follow the podcast. You subscribe. I hate, when, I hate when people do that. They're like, you gotta like this for part two. I did no. that like the first ten times, and then I'm like, they don't even, they didn't even do a part two. No, no. I was gonna talk about it today, but I'm liking where this is going so much more, and it's providing me value. I hope it's providing you guys value. But um, yeah, I, I think all in all. That was incredible. And it really helps me because, again, as a younger entrepreneur who's still really early in his journey, and especially when I was really like five years ago, before this was even a thought, before Mirror Media Marketing ever existed, I used to compare myself a lot. Like I would like, especially during my YouTube era, like I was like, oh, I'm doing this, but it's not working. And why is that working for that person? Oh, but this person's the same. It's horrible. But you also have to keep an eye on the market. Well, look, my question to you is this, right? For In my specific case, the reason why I got a little bit anxious and stressed is because I looked at the prices that these people were charging for very similar services. They were charging, in some cases, half for, if not the same amount of work, for sometimes double. That's why I was like a little bit worried about it, yeah. right? Well, like, let me, and I know why they're doing it. I've worked with those people. I could tell you why, how and why they're doing that, and, and then we'll kind of work backwards from there with you. Please, let me go ahead. Yeah. So, so I had some people when I first started, I wanted some shorts and I said in my head, cause I didn't know the content space. I was like, this is easy. This is going to be easy. I'm going to hire some, I already have video editors on my team. I'll use them. I'm like, Hey guys, I need shorts <clears throat> like this. And so they make some stuff and I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. Why'd you guys cut this? Like they, so they took a bunch of stuff and it didn't make sense. Like, even though I gave them an example, it didn't make sense. So then I was like, okay, I got to go to somebody who like knows how to make shorts. So then I started posting and got some people and I had some people even reach directly out to me and they were like, Hey, we'll just make you an example. And they made me an example, but the way they edited it, it literally didn't work. Like it didn't, it got less views than the stuff that I was posting that was like very roughly edited right in TikTok. And then, and then I realized what the problem was the real. So if, if, if you want to be a commodity, then just do video editing. But if you want to be a, a difference maker, you have to be a storyteller. And you have to be able to say, hey, I actually know the, the stories better than you do. 
right? Like you guys are better at pulling out the stuff that's interesting and you don't about a thousand percent. There's been stuff that I'm like, okay, people didn't care about that or it wasn't as big of a deal. But eight times out of 10, you guys are going to be able to pull a story out of something and present it in a way that I wouldn't have been able, I would have, wouldn't have picked that one, right? Like I would, that's the, and the other people that I've seen that are good, like you guys, that's what they're really, really good at. Perfectly well said, because that is exactly where I was going to go to with it. Cause I kid you not on Friday when I was going through this, I literally, I swear I did this. I went to our last episode of the show and listened to the part where you were talking about being a commodity. We listened to that 10 minute segment and in it, you said what we actually sell is not video editing, but it's storytelling. And you literally gave us a really amazing positioning statement. And I needed to hear that to remind myself of why we are the premium in the space of why we get to charge what we charge of why we have the luxury of working with the people we get to work with every day. And you know why we generate the results we do. It's because we're master storytellers. We're not master video editors we know how to tell a good story especially from a longer form story so i needed that reminder for sure the the really root of what i'm trying to get at is for anybody starting out and even for bigger people who are even in like your space how do you avoid becoming a commodity you have to you have to offer something that other people that you can't price comparison right so like for us we are able to measure things that nobody else is able to measure on their marketing and dentists are super analytical so dentists are more analytical than any of your clients that you have right now so us being able to give them data on things that nobody else can measure is, is number one, that it separates us. And then they actually know how we're doing or not doing. And then moving becomes a little bit harder because how do you, the next company they're going to move to, how do you know if they're actually going to be able to drive results or not? Because yep. you don't have the measuring stick anymore. Um, now they still have metrics and we still lose people. Like it's not, we're not a hundred percent, but it does. That is that is what makes us different. So you have to find the things that make you different. When I first started out, I just decided what made me different when we first started was I'm going to respond to every single email same day, like lightning fast. I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that they can reach me and communicate with me. This is before DMs and on social media, that kind of stuff, right? Yep, so that yep. was a big deal. Um, the other thing is we did no contract. Everybody else did contract. The other thing we did is I guaranteed the junk out of everything. So I was just like, I guarantee you that this is going to do this, 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 and this. I literally had people tell me, you can't legally do that. You're not allowed to tell people that. And I was like, whatever, I'm telling them it and go call the guarantee police or whoever you're going to call <laughs> because I, I know that I can do this. And occasionally I was wrong, Derek, and I'd have to come out of my pocket. So if I was making at the time, if I'm making $7,000 a month, and I missed the mark on that. I might have had to eat 2000 bucks or floated it on a personal credit card or something like that to figure yep. it out. But guess what I did? I went and figured it out. And yep. so those, those were things that I did to make myself different when I first started. So it sounds like the number one most important thing, though, I mean, it would make sense because it's basically the definition of a commodity, is not by all means avoiding the price comparison. Don't race to the bottom. Don't compete on price you compete on anything else but price that's how to avoid being a commodity yeah it's it's really hard if you there's there's some people out there that have really good books on this like way better understanding of this than i do seth gooden is is one of them he he's like one of the premier brand marketers in the world and he talks about it a lot and basically what happened in the early um industrial revolution of america the we everybody raced to be the product that everybody bought because before that everything was localized so you actually had gig economies like we're starting to rebuild now so like you would build um you would do horseshoes right you would make horseshoes for all the horses really good and i raised chickens really good and so then I, you could go raise your own chickens but you realize you know gary's eggs are actually better and because he's figured out something with the chickens and and I'll, I'm going to give them some of these horseshoes, right? So mm. every community had that, and that's how every community was built. But then when the re Industrial Revolution came along and people factories came along and people could actually mass produce products, people started to come out with products for everybody. So let's make toothpaste for everybody. Let's make cars for everybody. And that was the first, that has never been done before, before that. And so what, what Seth Gooden really has a good point on is he said, when that happened, it was making, you had to lower the quality, right? You couldn't make your horseshoes 
as good as you made them and you couldn't make your eggs as good as you made them back then. So I think the other thing that the reason I'm sharing this story is the thing that makes you really special and not a commodity is that you're specialized into a really niche group Mm. that you can perform something at a level that nobody else can. So in like five years, if you're still only focusing on podcasts, you'll be able to do shorts for podcasts and you'll understand more about how to boost a podcast and actually make it better and then people are going to come to you and they're not going to care what your price is because they're going to know your upside is so much so much more to them than anything that you can possibly charge. Yeah, and I'm really I'm really glad you said that because that basically validated my thought process because that's exactly what I was thinking. I, I was along the lines of especially if you're super niche focused like in your case, right? When a dental, you know, a DSO, you know, uh, some sort of, of of dental organization comes to you, right? They know SMC, you know, SMC Natural, this is the go-to. So whatever rates you're charging, they know that because, you know, this person over here worked with you and got these results, they know that they can trust you. And it's a similar situation. Yeah. And then when we want to control sales, like if we need more sales, then we can always lower our setup, right? But that's not really where we make the money is on the setup. It's on the monthly. And so it's like the monthly is the monthly, right? And and because it's for results. The other thing that made us different too, Derek, and I think this is really important. I think people miss the mark on this. If you're going to be like sub niche, it's all about relationships. You get, that's all I'm ever doing is just building relationships. I had a lady today from a startup and I won't tell you what vertical any of that. She's, she's VC backed. She called me and she said, Hey Gary, I want to, someone told me to call you and I would love for you to refer me people and I'll pay you. And I was like, to be honest with you, I don't really want that. Like I wouldn't, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to build that kind of relationship. And she was like, oh, okay. And I said, but if you have a good product, I'll refer you. You don't have to give me anything. And if you think we have a good service, I would love for you to share that with other people. She's like, I love that so much. And I do that all the time. I probably, I probably could be making five, ten thousand $10,000 a month on just fees for different things that we've referred out to people. But instead we're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue because those people refer stuff to us now because I didn't take their money. So I think those building those relationships is really key too to separating yourself because some, they, someone else already has those people's trust, right? Yep. Yeah. See, I'll tell you, this was a perfect transition. This was absolutely not planned because I literally was about to ask a question leading into building relationships because I had a unique thing happen that I want to ask. But I do want to challenge you there for a minute, Gary, because I think that a lot of people listening, and honestly, at first, when I first met you, wow, um, was it February or March of this year? I think something like that. Um, I honestly questioned you know, whether I agreed with you on this premise. So in a referral relationship, is it really detrimental to the relationship to set up a system like that where you bring somebody, they give you a fee or, or, you know, or vice versa? Doesn't that build and foster a really, you know, prosperous relationship between two people or do you find that that's not the case? I mean, potentially it can. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's like the worst thing in the world. I'm just saying what's worked for me. So I'm not, my mindset is not knocking anybody else's mindset. My mindset is just presenting what is, what I have done and what's been profitable for me. What has been profitable for me is to tell people over and over and over again, I don't want your money. I want to help you genuinely. Like this lady, I said, I'll refer you to some. I'll, I'll, I, I told her, I said, I don't know if your thing works or not, but I'll beta. I, I'll, I have clients that love beta testing things. So I'll take it to them and say, hey, I got a beta test. You want to try it out? It may work. It may not. And if you do a great job with it, then I can refer you to more people. And she's like, great. And, and I told her, I don't want your money. And if you think we do a good job, I would love for, you know, in the future that you refer us people. Yeah. That, that has worked really, 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 really well for us. And I don't have to pay people. Now, when I first started, our first referral partner that referred us a bunch of people, they referred because I paid them. Yep. And yep. I learned a lot from that. But I also learned that it's really hard to build a business when you're rev sharing with people as well because it cuts in that's your profit, right? So then I was like, how can I do this and provide value? But then now I had clients too. So I was like, Hey, I'll refer to you. You refer to me and people are happy to do that. Like most people, I don't know what it is, but most people are, are happy to do that. And they are presently surprised when I'm like, no, you can keep your money. Again, this is not planned, but this is a perfect transition because that is like exactly what I was going to ask you about like rev share models and all that stuff. 
I'm in a pretty unique position right now where one of my clients, um, I you know noticed that they were working with another agency and that agency has been working with them for many, many years and they happen to have like f- to work with 40 or 50 of our dream clients. So I reached out to the client, presented them with an option, say, hey guys, what are your thoughts on a potential strategic partnership? You know, X company times you guys times us. And they were like, oh my God, believe it or not, we've been thinking about this for months. I can't believe you just came to us and said this. This is amazing. We're putting you in touch. Like just put us in touch today. Nothing's come of it yet. I haven't even heard back or anything like that. But uh, I wanted to run this by you to see what your thoughts are and how I should navigate this because my thought exactly was, how do I provide them enough value where they can give us those 50 clients? Because they all have the budget. They're our dream clients. We've actually been in contact with some of them before. And if this even gives us a quarter of their clients, it's quadrupling our business. It'll take us literally to the moon. Okay, so I had a similar situation where I had a manufacturer who works with thousands and thousands and thousands of dentists. Like if I land them as a referral partner, my company is now considered small compared to what I could build with this. Like I could throw my current, like throw my current company away and this would be like a whole nother company bigger, twice as big, three times as big, right? So they came to us and were like, hey, we want an opportunity. And we weren't quite ready for it yet, but over time we developed some relationship, had some case studies, we showed them things like that. And they said, okay, we're gonna give you a shot. And so they said, how do you want that to look? So this is how I built it out. Cause, cause you could be greedy or I could be greedy and say, just start referring us people and we'll, but I said, let's beta test this. I wanna make sure that we're who we, we're who you think we are and that you are who we think you are, right? But we don't know because we've never worked together before. So let's beta test this and you give us a couple clients and we're gonna do X, Y, and Z for these clients and then we're gonna go from there. How's that sound? And they're like, great. And so now we're rolling out the beta test and we got an agreement that, hey, if you guys make this beta test work, we'll give you all the clients, right? All the clients you can handle and which would mean I'd have to like, would be huge. Like my current team couldn't even like we'd have to hire. We'd have to start hiring, and we have a whole plan around that and all that kind of stuff, right? But it's big, right? It's really, really big. So for you, it's the same thing. So it's go to them and say, okay, how do we make this look? What does this look like for you? What would this give you back? And this is where they're gonna tell you, right? And they're gonna like, well, we're kind of hoping for something back. Okay, well, what does that look like? Would you rather have something monetary? Or would you rather have something more like we refer clients to you? Because we have a bunch of clients that we work with too. And let them pick. Mm. <laughs> and then and then when they pick, say, okay, cool. Yeah, we're happy to do that. What does that look like? So basically you're saying literally have them answer all the questions. I like. I was trying to answer – for no, them, them. Yeah, when, no, when I them. should yeah, just do have them do it, like yes. literally the questions yes. I'm trying to answer, just have them answer them. How do you, 100%. how is this going to work for you? How do you want this to work? That's what value exactly are you, what, I'm do. what Yeah. What value do you want out of this? What, 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 what do you, what, how do you see this working? Like they'll build the whole thing for you in the first 10 minutes of your call. So then let me ask you this question. If in the event that it is monetary, right? Mm-hmm. What's the smart way? Because look, I, I don't know, right? I was thinking a percentage of monthly revenue, but that would just be insane because that's like every month out of profit just to yeah. this person. They're doing nothing. Do I give them a, like a them. really... No, ask them. <laughs> Say, what do you want out of it? It's probably lower than what you were thinking. I bet you it's lower than what you're thinking. You don't think it would be a situation where they're like, hey, we want 10 or 15% of your monthly cut of this client? I, d- I doubt it. Like more than likely, they're going to be like... I've had one person ever... I've done this a lot. Like I've because I've had this conversation a lot. I've had one person ever ask me, okay, yeah, I want a percentage on a monthly basis. One. Everybody else is like, you know, Gary, I, you know, what, what do you think is fair? Da, 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 da. And I'm thinking, hey, how about I do a setup charge and I give you the, if you don't have a setup charge right now, say, hey, we'll we charge do, a we setup. Do. Okay, but let's just pretend like, okay, let's pretend you don't have a setup charge. Okay. We'll charge a setup charge and we'll give you the whole thing. <laughs> you know what Got I mean? It. Like, like just make it so it's just like a win for them. And just keep in mind, just tell them like, hey, if, depending on how aggressive we go, because what if they said, well, we want, we want $3,000 a month from you for each client that we refer you, right? And you're like, well, I only charge $3,000 a month. Yeah. So you're shaking your head no, but the answer is still yes. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just have to make my price $6,000 a month then. And I'll give you $3,000 a month. I'm happy to do that. Do you, do you think your clients would be good with that? So the answer is always yes, Derek. Like the answer is always oh. yes, right? But it's just like, how do we, but you, again, you put it back on them. 
I see what you're saying. So that's, that's, that's really important. That's really because I need to highlight that. So the way you just said that, that positioning statement, the structure of that sentence, always yes. And the way you flip the switch, you're like, hey, so you're right. cool with me charging your clients $6,000? Obviously, they're not cool with that because that's double our current price. It's not going to make any sense. And you're showing them it's not going to make sense by them telling themselves, basically. It's a really common sales tactic, actually, but that's perfect. It's called yes, but. Yeah. I use it. I, I, I try to tell everybody, like, on my team, everybody I work with, the answer is always yes. Like, you're not asking me to do anything immoral, right? You're not, you're not asking me, like, steal from somebody. Then the answer is going to be yes. It's just a matter of how we do it. So if people are like, man, I need, I need to make more money. Well, cool. What, what's, yeah, yes. The answer is yes, Derek. You're, you're a team member of ours. You want more money? The answer is yes. What skills are you bringing to the table to help me pay you more money? When I sent this message th that last Friday and then they, they were, they said, oh my God, I've been thinking about this for so long. I was so stoked about it because look, this really, and this is the last thing I want to say because I don't want to like, you know, speak it out of existence or anything like that, but it's, um, like if we do this, this will literally, this will probably take us well over 80, 90 K a year, like a million dollar company. That's awesome. So yeah. So then, so this is how you do it. So it's just like, Hey, we're having this conversation with, I'm super stoked to meet with you guys today. This is really honestly exciting for me because you guys work with a lot of the people that we want to work with. We have a lot of clients like the ones you already have. So we already know that we can bring them value. And uh, I just want to try today. The, the whole purpose of this meeting is how to bring you guys value in this relationship. So let's just start walking through that. And what it, what it, how how can we bring you value? How can we bring your clients value? And then when and then oh okay and they, if they kind of throw it back on you, say well we were kind of hoping that you would tell us how that would look. Well we got lots of options. I mean we could we could do anything. Like do you value more of a referral or do you value more of the monetary? And just keep flipping it back on them and get them to answer. And more than likely, you're going to be able to figure out how to make it work. Like, it's always, there's always a way to make it work. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Now I'm just hoping that the email that I sent when we first connected wasn't too selfish. I don't think it was. But I think if I would have said it more of what you just said, it would have probably been better. But we'll see if I hear always, back. Always frame everything. Always frame everything from how, how you want to help support them. Like, always, 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 always. Like, the more you do that, Derek, with your team with your clients, with referral partners, with market, everything is, that's always the proposition. How, how is this going to help them? Because otherwise it's, you wouldn't be in business, yeah. right? If you didn't have something that helps everybody that you're working with, then you wouldn't be in business. So just you, you can always position everything from that angle. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And you know, one of my core values in the company since last week that I built out is always lead with value, lead with value. So that really helps me because now I know how I can actually lead with value more. And actually, I heard a really interesting thing today. I was on TikTok, I'm pulling it up. He said, lead with an offer, not an ask. So the question was, how do you provide more value? And for me, that's always been really, really difficult. But when I heard this sentence, I thought about how did I end up doing the show with you, right? How did I end up landing most of my clients? I led with an offer, not an ask. I said, hey, I'll do all the editing. I'll do everything. All I need is 10 minutes of your time. I didn't ask. I offered. Yeah. I offered that. And yeah. that just, that was incredible. So look, you need to know how to provide value. Here's how you provide value. Lead with an offer, not an ask. No, I did not come up with that. I, like I saw that. it on TikTok. But if you lead with an offer, you're always leading with value first. And the worst thing that they can say is no to your offer. Now you're not asking. You're not taking anything. You're always giving first. That's the trick. Lead with an offer, not an ask. Had to clip that. Kyle, That's that was good. a clip. That was a good clip, Kyle. <laughs> leave that in, Kyle. Leave that part in. Leave it all in. Honestly, this episode, just leave it all in. I'm fired up. This is this is this is amazing. And I guess the the last question to tie this all together would be this, right? And this applies for me and anybody else who might be in a similar position. If they want to build out these strategic partnerships, right? These referral partnerships. How do you go about doing that? So like if there's a company I know in my space that maybe I didn't have the client connection, but I just want to do it in like a cold lead style. How do I develop that relationship to make it beneficial for everybody from not knowing each other? Yeah. So this, I actually have built, like we literally, so I used to think we built our company to about $300,000 a month in recurring revenue with this model, but I didn't think I could scale it. I always thought, no, I'm not going to be able to scale this. I'm not going to be able to get it to like triple or quadruple if I wanted to. We actually have almost 5 x it from that number, okay? So here's how we did it. It's very simple. So number one, we, um, on social media, I put my face on everything. So everything in my profile, I didn't put a picture of my family. I didn't put my logo. I didn't, it was my, it's my face on purpose. And then I made a target list of people I wanted to have as referral partners. And I went and interacted with them like crazy, liked everything commented on everything, 
it just was in their face all the time. I literally went to people I work with and I said, see this list of people, they're all going to be giving us clients. And I just interacted, interacted, interacted. And then I just figured out more and better ways, more and more and more to get um, in front of them and to provide value to them. So I started a podcast, had no idea how to do a podcast, no clue. I just said, we're starting a podcast and I'm going to bring people on. I don't care if anybody listens to it or not. And we started bringing in people that we wanted to work with. Then we added webinars. We started doing So now I, I, now I always tell people, hey, let's do a webinar together. We'll get in front of your clients, get back in front of our clients. And then I just talk with them, build a relationship, and then ask them, hey, I would love to refer people to you. Would that be okay? Because they all work with the people I work want. They all want to work with the people I work with, right? So I'm like, can I refer people to you? And then I get on a phone call with them and just say, hey, tell me about you. How does how how do you do what you do? What what how do you provide value to these dentists? How do you do this? How do you do that? And by the end of it, I never I don't even have to ask. People are like, hey, we, let how can we refer to you? How does it how does it work f- for working with you? And how can I get more clients to you? And da, 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 da. but if you just lead with value, everybody's going to refer to you anyway. That honestly blew my mind because I was looking at it the wrong way the whole time. And the part that I was looking at the wrong way wasn't the lead with value part. It was getting in front of the people. I mean, that was it really blew my mind. So instead of like cold emailing or LinkedIn messaging out of the blue or just sending a random Instagram DM, you get in front of them, you engage with their company accounts. Maybe you engage with the personal Instagrams of the founders or the VPs or something like that. Do that for 30, 60, 90 days and then send a message. Hey, I've been a long time fan, big fan of what you do. I'm in a similar space. I'd love to potentially bring you guys some clients. Who can I talk to about this? No, I want to refer. Yeah, I want to refer you guys clients. Like today, I have a client right now. I'd always go in with a client. So hey, I got a client right now what if that you, I want to refer to you. What if you don't though? That's my question. What if you don't have a client you could refer? Well, I, I have some clients that I future want to refer to you. So okay, so just flip the just flip the script a little bit yeah. and okay, got it. Yeah. That makes perfect yeah, sense. But I, a lot of times I would have referrals. Like I always have a referral, right? Like there's always somebody I can refer. No, that's that's perfect. That makes that makes so much sense. That makes so much I'm gonna implement all this. This is I'm not gonna lie, of all the episodes we filmed, this episode I have felt at least personally for me, has been so valuable. I don't know. I hope it's been valuable for you guys listening. But, I mean, this 4th of July weekend was crazy. A lot of stuff happened business-wise. And I'm really glad we got time to connect here because it helped me get a lot, really clear on a lot of things. And I think we helped a lot of people in today's episode. That's awesome, man. I'm super stoked about that. I want to shout somebody out. I got a message mm, from, yes. um, let's see, on Instagram. Yes, yes. From Stella. Stella um, Blomfield. And she's from New Zealand, I believe. Anyway, she just reached out and she was just like, she left a voice message. I shared it with you. She was like, thank you so much. I'm just starting my agency. I like, I can really relate to Derek because she obviously she's closer on her entrepreneur journey to you. And then she's like, and the value that you guys are providing is awesome. I just wanted to shout her out and just say thank you for listening. Number one. And number two, I, I, I love hearing from people like that. So if a lot of times we have like a discord and every once in a while, I'm just like, hey, who's actually here and who's paying attention? And then all of a sudden, all these people are like, I've been following you for years. Or da, 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 da. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, I've never seen you before. I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen you on my Instagram. <laughs> I haven't seen you on TikTok. I haven't. I respond to all the comments. <laughs> and so I love when people do that. And so thank you so much for that. It really encourages me. And uh, I just love hearing from people. The other thing I want to plug, Derek, is we got uh, Agency Growth Engine's website up. We have Mm. an email list every week. We're sending an email out and I want to start including that link everywhere. It's free. And then there's our mastermind application is on there as well. That's something that I, that's been really helpful to me. And I know that's helped a lot of other agencies. We just had somebody drop that they, this year, their company has grown 523%. Shout out Liam. Yeah. 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 yeah, He, he, he's just like, he shared the screenshot. I was blown away to be honest with you. Cause I know, People are growing and we help people, but that's been like, that was like, dude, that's crazy. 500% in under like in four months, th- yep. three, four months. So um, anyways, yeah, that's, those are a couple of things that I want to make sure to just do shout outs on. Guys, the link for Agency Growth Engine website is going to be in the description. By the time you're watching this, the episode's been out for a week now with Chris Cunningham, the founder of ClickUp. It's a but I think it's a $4 billion company. My company uses ClickUp. I know your company uses ClickUp. Also, yeah, like he literally went over like what it was like to shoot a Super Bowl, how he tried to get Britney Spears to do his ad, and that didn't work out. Like he, We went over crazy high-level marketing stuff that probably 
most people would never get the opportunity to hear stuff like that. Yeah, definitely go listen to that episode. The link is going to be in the description. If you don't have time, I understand. Go look at the clips. The clips are on Gary's page. They're on the Agency Growth Engine podcast page. The link to follow Age is going to be all in the description below. And you can also apply for the mastermind where you might even be able to meet Gary. With that all said, guys, thank you so much for watching and or listening to this episode of the 8 Figure Agency Show. I really hope it provided you with some value. I'll hand the mic now to Gary because I want him to close this one out. I feel like I'm always doing it and I think I would be better for the audience if Gary does it. All right, make sure you guys listen and subscribe and leave comments and stuff. Perfect. Hey, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> hey, you guys are great. Get ready for that episode on the recession. We'll uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.